A lot of our guys, to be honest, they may not admit this or not. You know, uh, you win game one of the playoffs, and all everybody talked about was the Lakers. Let's be honest, that was a national narrative was, hey, the Lakers are fine. They're down 1-0, but they figured something out. No one talked about Nikola just had a historic performance. He's got 13 triple doubles now, third all time. What he's doing is just incredible, but the narrative wasn't about the Nuggets. The narrative wasn't about Nikola. The narrative is about the Lakers and their adjustments. So, you know, you put that in your pipe, you smoke it, and you come back, and you know what? We're going to go up 2-0. Perhaps nobody is more mad about the disrespect that the Nuggets have faced this year than Nuggets head coach Mike Malone, which go ahead and talk your mess. You've earned this, even if you are going a bit overboard, constantly bringing up the Lakers, what feels like every chance that you get. Well, if anybody's still talking about the Lakers in the NBA Finals, uh, that's on them. <laughs> I mean, uh, they've gone fishing. We're still playing. Jokes aside, the Nuggets were the number one seed in the Western Conference for a large chunk of this season. And yet, for some reason, coming into this postseason, it felt like they were an afterthought regardless of their regular season dominance and deep roster. The disrespect has been so real for this team that even Vegas wasn't showing the Nuggets any love coming into the postseason. The Nuggets entered this postseason with just the six best odds to win the NBA championship. You heard that right. The one seed in the vaunted Western Conference entered the postseason with only the sixth highest odds to win a chip. Their odds were lower than teams like the Warriors, the Suns, Bucks, and even the 76ers. With all of these teams long gone, some people are finally starting to take note of that sleeping giant out west that has resided in Denver, while others are still trying to comprehend the historic season that this team has had so far. While the back-to-back -back MVP Jokic does a ton of heavy lifting for this team, this team is much deeper than just him, and this postseason has been living proof of that. But first, guys, good habits start with Chime, and whether you just got your first job or secured your first paycheck, Chime has you covered. You see, Chime wants you to have a healthy financial journey, and that's why they're here to help. When you sign up for Chime and link a qualifying direct deposit, you get access to things like getting paid up to two days early and a fee-free overdraft for up to $200. With Chime, there are no monthly fees, no minimum balance, and no deposit required to become a member. So sign up for a Chime checking account to data link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes, and it doesn't affect your credit score. To get started, head on over to Chime.com forward slash coop. A huge shout out to Chime for coming through and sponsoring today's content. But before we go, I have to read this mandatory disclosure. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the bank, Corp and A, or Stride Bank and A members, FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com forward slash spot me for details. So many people readily dismiss the Nuggets as one of those bubble teams that had a good but fluky run through the bubble postseason when that was never the reality. Some of those bubble memes were funny, but the teams that made deep runs during the bubble did so for a reason. The Denver Nuggets have had an incredible 63% win percentage over the past five seasons in the NBA, which is the third best percentage in the NBA, only trailing the Milwaukee Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers during that time. During this stretch, Nikola Jokic has turned heads with his inherently unique style of play and ability to control the tempo of the game. The man is quite literally a point center and dare I say it, he's the best point center that I have ever seen. The past five seasons, Jokic has averaged 23.5 points, 11.4 rebounds, and 8 assists playing in a monstrous 368 games. Not only has this man been incredibly consistent while being one of the best players in the game and bagging two MVPs in the process, he has also been incredibly available, which for a lot of players can be half of the battle. I love his unselfish style of play and ability to get himself going at any time. It almost feels unfair that Jokic is 6'10", one of the best passers, and has shots like this in his back pocket. Jokic just gets it off in time. It's up. Oh, it's good! Of course it goes in! Jokic from downtown! Anthony Davis just stares at him! His size combined with his array of moves and unorthodox release make for a hard contest regardless of who's guarding him. Anthony Davis is a super athlete that is nearly 7 feet tall while possessing a 7'6 wingspan. He knew that Jokic had to shoot it 
and it simply did not matter. I truly feel bad for anybody that has to guard Jokic for a full 24 seconds. You can send help, but you run the risk of jumpstarting the rest of his team, as Jokic again is one of the best passers in the game. I will say it as many times as I have to. This man is a center that averaged 9.8 assists this season. Can you believe that Jokic is so unselfish and has stats that are so good and come so effortlessly that he would actually catch criticism for being quote unquote a stat patter? I'm watching Jokic pass the ball and I'm watching his guys catch and shoot catch and shoot, no hesitation, good or bad shot. And let me tell you one thing, it goes on, it conversations goes on in that locker room and players know where their stats are. Okay, so we had this energy for Russell Westbrook when we used to see Steven Adams boxing out and he, and he used to fly in and get these rebounds and Steven Ag Adams could have jumped up and grabbed them. We don't keep that same energy for Jokic. And let me tell you something else. You know it was eight games this season where Jokic had single digit shot attempts. I've seen Giannis do this, and you're telling me that Jokic is the stat patter? Not a time. Kisberg off the mark. Another rebound there to Giannis. He's going to finish one rebound shy of a triple double. And that'll do it. Oh, he got it. Does that count? <laughs> The guy can care less about stats and accolades. There's a part of me that believes that he threw the MVP race this season, just because he hates the narratives and attention that surrounds it. If Jokic has been stat padding this whole time, then I'm glad that he hasn't stopped in the playoffs. If you go to ESPN and scroll down his game log, you'd see that he's been putting together one of the best playoff runs of all time, averaging a 30 point, 13 rebound and 10 assist triple double shooting 54% from the field and 47% from the three-point line. That is legendary stuff. To me, Jokic is undoubtedly the best player in the game right now. You give this guy a team with quality role players like KCP, Christian Brown, and Bruce Brown Jr. who has been shooting 62% from the field this postseason, then you have a problem for the rest of the league. Sure, it wasn't the loudest offseason in Denver, but it was a great one for adding depth in players that play hard on both sides of the basketball. Christian Brown has been a super dependable rookie that fills that 3 and D role, showing that he won't hurt you while he's on the floor. The guy makes a difference. Now, while I'm here, I want you guys to keep a lookout for Peyton Watson also. He had a down year at UCLA, but was the number 12 recruit in 2021, which doesn't really mean that it'll be good. It's just a quick way for me to say that he was talented without going more in depth, which I will fairly soon. While I'm still here, I like Nanji also. I love how Denver has drafted. I mean, have you seen that Jokic guy that was a second round pick in 2014? This Nuggets team is special. They really have a 6'10 sharpshooter that is shooting 41% on threes with an uncontestable release who hasn't seen a shot that they didn't like. No one's gonna contest this shot. Jokic pushes, hits Porter, uses a bounce to gather some balance and knocks it home. This is when the Nuggets are at their very, very best. Go up 2-0. They're on their own floor. Well, they've got work to do. Porter knocks down the three-pointer and it's tied. MPJ is a literal glitch. You are not supposed to be this tall, this athletic, and have the ability to shoot the ball like this. Sometimes I wonder how good he would have been if those injuries never happened, because while he's athletic now, he was more athletic before his injuries. What's terrifying is that you can see some flashes of that pre-injury athleticism coming back. What's been welcoming to Nuggets fans is that Porter isn't just a shooter and that he's rounded out his game. He uses his long arms to contest and even block shots. I've even seen a surprising willingness from him to move the ball at times. MPJ recorded six assists against the Lakers in game three of the conference finals. For Michael Porter Jr., this would be a career high. Now, while we're talking about lengthy players, Aaron Gordon is 6'8", and though he isn't filling up the stat sheet statistically, he's been a Swiss Army knife for this team, being an impact defender and usually taking on the toughest matchup. Did you guys see what he was doing against Kevin Durant? 
Scratch that. Have you seen what he's been doing for the entire playoffs? The Nuggets are a big team, and yes, they are smart, but they don't have a big time rim protector, which makes his job that much harder. You can easily make the argument that he's been the third most important player on this team with his ability to make life hard for different types of players. I know he's not the biggest threat on the offensive side of the ball, but he is a threat when Jokic has the ball, and that's all that matters. It really is a skill in itself to not fall victim to disrespect, especially when Jokic and Murray are making sure that this team isn't short on offense. Jokic and Murray have one of the most devastating two-man games in the entire league. In fact, a lot of people are just now realizing how good these two have been. I feel like Jokic can be so impressive that people can forget altogether how much of a threat that Murray is on his own. Don't forget that Murray had multiple 50-point games in one series alone in the NBA bubble. This postseason, Murray has continued flamethrowing, averaging 28 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists on 48% from the field and 40% from 3, continuing to be the true multi-level scorer that he is. Mind you, that he is doing this in his first season back from what can be viewed as a career-altering injury. If that doesn't speak volumes to his preparation and mindset, then I don't know what will. Did you guys know that Carmelo Anthony is actually a huge reason that the Nuggets got Jamal? If the Nuggets didn't have a pick swap with the Knicks in the 2016 draft as a result of that mellow trade, there is a chance that we never see Jamal in Denver. I'll never forgive the Pelicans for passing on Jamal Murray in favor of Buddy Heald in the 2016 NBA draft. But hey, kudos to this Nuggets team for drafting as well as they have and staying the course while not panicking. There is beauty in growth and continuity and something to be said about Jokic spending every year of his career with Coach Malone. If Jokic were to win a NBA championship, where are you guys ranking this run? Would it be better than Hakeem's or maybe Dirk's? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.